Hello and welcome to Bay College's video lectures for intermediate algebra. We're going to look at section 5.2 in this video, and this deals with adding and subtracting rational expressions. First thing we want to recall is adding or subtracting fractions that have a common denominator, that have a like denominator. Essentially, if their denominators are the same, we know that we can just add their numerators and their denominators don't change. 7 plus 11 would be 18. Both of these were a denominator of 12. I could have written it as 7 plus 11 are both over 12, right? And we get 18 over 12. Well, we can reduce that, and we always want to reduce our fractions. And if I look at this, I say they both have a common factor of 6. So I can reduce that out because 18 is the same as 6 times 3, and 12 is the same as 4, or excuse me, 2 times 6. So we can reduce that. And we have 3 halves, 3 over 2. So we're able to simplify that by adding these common denominators. Now here we see, OK, they have a common denominator of 35. So I could just subtract their numerators. 29 minus 22 would give me 7. And they both would have that common denominator. So I get 7 35ths. I also recognize that this reduces. 7 and 35 have a common factor. 35 is 5 times 7. This 7 reduces that 7. Any number divided by itself is 1. So I have 1 over 5. 1 divided by 5, 1 fifth. So this difference is 1 fifth. Now we're going to do the exact same thing when it comes to rational expressions. If they have a common denominator, we can just combine like terms. We have x plus 1 plus 6. Both have the same denominator, so I can combine my like terms. 1 and 6 are just numbers. I can combine them. Positive 1 plus 6 is 7. So we have x plus 7. This is not a like term, so I just bring it along. And we get x plus 7 over 7. One thing to keep in mind is you cannot cancel these 7s. You can't cancel this because this is a term. You can only cancel factors like we did there. Those were factors. There was no sum or difference there. Here there's a sum. We cannot cancel it. Now, if we look at this example, it may be a little more intimidating. But essentially, if they have the same denominator, we can simply combine like terms. I have 2x plus 3x for a total of 5x's. Then I have a positive 1 plus 6 gives me 7. 5x plus 7. Now, at this point, I would check, is there any factoring I can do? 5 and 7 have no common factors. x minus 3 is what it is. I can't reduce anything. So this is the simplified answer. Let's look at this here. If we have y plus 1 minus 3, Oh, both of them have a common denominator, so I can essentially combine like terms. When it's subtraction, just be very aware of that sign. So they both have a common denominator of y plus 2. So I can say y plus 1 minus 3. Well, it's 1 minus 3, because those are the like terms. They're just the numbers. 1 minus 3 is negative 2. And we see that we get y minus 2 over y plus 2. I can't cancel any of these values because these are terms, not factors. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's look at a more complex one. Here it's getting more intimidating because we're having larger polynomials. But don't panic. Just take it one step at a time. I can see that they both have the same denominator. So I'm essentially going to combine like terms. We have 3x minus 2x's. And here's where you do not want to make a sign error. You want to make sure that you distribute this negative to all the terms there. 3x minus 2x would just be an x. Negative 1 minus a negative 7. Well, minus a negative is positive. Negative 1 plus 7 is going to give me negative 6. <coughs> One thing I want to check is, does this reduce? I would have to factor this. The factors of negative 6 are 1 and 6 uh, that have a difference of 5. So let me factor that. We'd have one, x plus 1, x minus 6, because 1 times negative 6 is negative 6. And 1x minus 6x would be negative 5. Now we see this whole value, the entire difference, will reduce this. So we can treat it as a factor. This 
can reduce that. We're not canceling terms. We're canceling an entire factor. Anything divided by itself is 1. So this reduces to 1 over the factor of x plus 1. So we were able to simplify our fraction just as we did before. What if they have different denominators? Well, before we can add or subtract fractions that have different denominators, we have to find the least common denominator, the LCD. So just like we did here, we can factor these numbers. I know that this is 3 times 5, and this is 3 times 2. Well, this is what they have in common. They have a 3 in common. So each of them must have at least one factor of 3, because they already have one factor of 3. This one has a 5, but this one doesn't. So they would each have to have a 5. This one has a factor of 2, and this one doesn't. So they each need at least one factor of 2. Now, if I put this together, 3 times 5 times 2 is going to give me 30. LCD for this example is 30. So now I can go back and say, well, to make this a common denominator, I have to make it 30. It was missing a factor of 2, so I can give it a factor of 2. What I do to the bottom, I do to the top. I'm essentially multiplying by 1. And this is a fancy way of writing 1. 2 over 2 is 1. So I get 14 over 30. That's the denominator I was looking for. Now this one here, I say, well, what do I have to do to 6 to make it 30? Well, it was missing that factor of 5. So I'm going to give it a factor of 5, top and bottom, multiply it by a special form of 1. 5 times 5 is 25. And 6 times 5 is that common denominator of 30. Now I'm ready to add them. 14 and 25 is going to give me 39. And I'll write it right here, 39, both of them over 30. So now we can simplify this just like we did all of our other fractions. I look at these and say, well, they're both divisible by 3. And I get 13 tenths, which does not reduce any further, 13 tenths. So hopefully we remember how to work with adding or subtracting fractions of unlike denominators. Let's look at another example. Here we have subtraction. We have 3 fourths minus 3 twentieths. Well, if we factor these down, if I factor the larger value first, I see, well, I know 20 is 4 times 5. Here we have a common factor already, but this is what we don't have in common. So really, all I have to do is say, what do I have to multiply by 4 to make it 20? 5 is the factor it needs. So 5 over 5, I can multiply by this fraction. I get 15 over 20 minus 3 over 20. And now we can just find the difference of these terms. 15 minus 3 is 12. 12 over 20 have a common factor of 4. So I can reduce that and get 3 fifths. So 3 fifths is the difference of these two fractions. Now, what if they are rational expressions? That means they just have some variables. They're one polynomial divided by another. We're going to do the exact same thing here. We're going to factor these down. And honestly, when it comes to variables, they can be easier to work with than actual numbers. Because if I look at my y terms first here, here I have one y, here I have two. So my LCD has to have at least two y's, because one of them has two factors of y. And then we can look at the numbers 6 and 3. Well, 6 and 3, their least common uh, multiple would be 6. So my LCD is 6y squared. So what do I have to do to 6y to make it this LCD? I have to multiply it by a factor of y. And what I do to the bottom, I do to the top. So I'm essentially multiplying by 1. Here, to make this 6y squared, I'd have to multiply that 3 by a 2. So I multiply it by 2, top and bottom. Now I'm ready. y times 1 is just y over 6y squared plus 3x times 2 is 6x over 6y squared. And now we see they have that common denominator. I'm ready to combine them. y plus 6x, since they're not like terms, it's just going to be y plus 6x over that common denominator. This is as far as we can take it, because I can't 
factor anything out of this to cancel anything down here. These sixes don't cancel because this six is contained in a term that sum or difference is going to limit my canceling. All right, <clears throat> let's look at this example. <clears throat> One key uh, that I like to direct students to is when you see these polynomials, Sometimes you want to identify and recognize that maybe it's not in descending order. And it might be in your best interest to write it in descending order. So I'm just going to rewrite the problem and put this in descending order. My a term is the leading term, and that positive 4 is the constant. So I just reorder it. So now I'm going to factor. Because I want to factor just like I did those numbers. I factored 15 to 3 and 5, or 6 to 2 and 3. Um, <clears throat> if we do this factoring, I can factor a negative 2, because I like to have that leading term to be positive. So if I factor out a negative 2, that's going to leave me with a. And I, fa I factor a negative 2 out of there, it leaves me with negative 2. How can I check my factoring? I could distribute that. I'd get negative 2a and a positive 4. And that's what I started with. So I know I factored it correctly. Now I'm ready to assess what is going to be my common denominator. My LCD, well, this has the entire factor of a minus 2. This has the factor of a minus 2. So that is common. What this one has is a negative 2. This one doesn't. So I would need a factor of negative 2. So what can I do to get negative 2 times this quantity? Well, this is already that value. So all I have to do is multiply this one by a negative 2. But what I do to the bottom, I do to the top. So this fancy form of 1, I can multiply negative 2 times negative 1 as a positive 2. And I'm going to leave this denominator in this form, plus 4 over that denominator. And now that they have the common denominator, I simply combine those numerators. 2 plus 4 is 6 over negative 2 times the quantity a minus 2. And now I'm ready to reduce. If I notice here, 6 divided by negative 2, well, that would be negative 3. So negative 3 over that denominator of a minus 2. Now, another way to think about it is that I could rewrite this as 2 and 3. The 2's would cancel, and then I'd have a negative. We generally don't want to leave a negative in the denominator. We want to bring it to the numerator. <clears throat> All right, let's look at this example. If we look at these two values, obviously they don't appear to be the same. So let's factor. I can factor this one because I recognize it to be the difference of squares, which gives me the sum or difference of terms. We have y plus 9 times the quantity y minus 9, because this was the difference of squares. Now, if we look at our two denominators, to determine our LCD, we look at all the factors that are involved. They each have a factor of y plus 9. This one has a factor of y minus 9, but that one doesn't. But this one has a factor of 2, and this one doesn't. So our LCD is the combination of all the factors that are required to make these denominators. And we can look y plus 9, y minus 9, and a factor of 2. Well, this one is missing the factor of 2. It has the other two factors. So I'm going to give it a 2 over 2. And I'm ready to rewrite this. 2 times 27 is 54 over 2 times y plus 9, y minus 9. Plus, this one is missing that factor of y minus 9. So I'm going to give it that factor top and bottom. I'm essentially multiplying by 1. And so I can rewrite that denominator. So now we can see they are common. But for this, I'm going to distribute 3 times y and 3 times negative 9. And now after all that work, I'm ready to combine some like terms. I know that 54 plus a negative 27 is 54 minus 27, which is a positive 27. And then I have this positive 3y. And then my denominator, which I already found to be common. Now I'm ready to reduce. I can factor out a 3 of these terms. I know 27 has a factor of 3.
And we can see that common factor of y plus 9. So I can reduce the entire factor. And what I'm left with is 3 over 2 times y minus 9. And you can leave it in that factored form. All right, let's look at this example here. 1 over x plus y minus 8 over x squared minus y squared. This is already as simplified as it can get. We can't factor anything there. But here, I recognize this as the difference of terms. So I'm going to factor that to x plus y, x minus y, the difference of their terms. And now we can see well, our, what's common between them is x plus y. But what this one has that that one doesn't is x minus y. So this is actually my least common denominator. So I have to give this its missing factor, x minus y. And what I do to the bottom, I do to the top. And now I'm ready to multiply this. The top, I distribute a 1. I get x minus y. And the other fraction is already has the LCD. And now I can simply combine like terms. Well, there doesn't happen to be any like terms. We have x minus y minus 8. These are not like terms, so I have to leave it as it is over x minus y, x plus y. Nothing's going to reduce here. This is the simplified form. All right, one last example, and this is actually for you to try. Definitely factor this and find that least common denominator. Do what you have to do to make their denominators common. Find, you combine their like terms, simplify, reduce if necessary and come to the simplified solution. Thank you for watching.